Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to make this beautiful card using some basic supplies that you have in your stash. We're going to use some dye-based inks, some cardstock, some handmade stencils, some ink blending tools, and I want you to look around for something you can use as a fence. Now I'm using this kind of lattice piece for a fence because I didn't have like a little fence post, but I thought this would work really well too. I just indicated how high that fence post was going to come up and use that as a guide for my stamping. I'm using stamps from our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com. And what I'm doing here is using a couple of their new Magnolia sets. And I'll have everything linked down below in the video description so you can find what I'm using. Feel free to substitute with other peg stamp sets you have because I think this would be really pretty with roses or even um, like lupins or lavender, whatever you feel like using. I'm using a couple shades of pink for this. I like to ink it first with a lighter color and then rock it in the darker color. And then for the smaller ones that are just outlines, I'm just using the darker ink. Now I'm using memento inks here because I know if I want to pump up the color a little bit, I can go over it with any of my alcohol pens and it's not going to smear that memento ink. So that's one of the reasons I use a memento so often. It's such a tried and true, um, ink pad and now rubber stamp tapestry is carrying the reinkers for the memento pads which is really handy i think that if you rely on an ink definitely get the reinker for it because it'll give you dozens of, of uh, lifetimes out of those ink pads i'm using a combination of blick studio markers and copic markers just to color in those those flowers nothing fancy i'm just doing a flat coloring here i'm not doing much in the way of blending. I just basically want to make sure that I have enough solid color there so they don't get lost when I do my stamping of the leaves and the inking. So basically, because I'm going to put an overlay of a die cut on top, I just got to make sure I've got a pretty dense, vibrant color in the background. And I'm using a variety of the different um, foliage from these two sets. There's a really big, beautiful solid leaf. Um, and then there's also these ferns that I'm putting towards the bottom because, you know, you wouldn't have ferns high up on a hedge. They would be layer ground cover. They're low. And then I've got this pretty little, um, it's almost like a little trellis and I'm kind of letting those poke up high so that I just have this other little shape of greenery uh, higher on the hedge there. Now I'm using my makeup style brushes here and a um, just a, it was actually just a leftover die cut that I'm using as a stencil. It was from uh, My Favorite Things die cut. You could definitely cut something out with your decorative scallop scissors or just freehand it out of cardstock. That's all this is, is cardstock. Um, and there's like a hundred million cloud dies out there. So you probably have something in your stash either from a set or just on its own that you can use if you don't want to hand cut. And I think they have cloud stencils. So it it doesn't matter. Use whatever you have and then just ink off of it. The reason I like these makeup style brushes is that it's kind of impossible to get a, um, a messed up edge, but also your ink blending brushes, the hog bristle ones that we've used forever and ever work really well for this too. These are just new, so they're kind of fun for me to use and try. And I also want to find uses for these smaller ones that came in the set that I bought. Um, so I thought that would be really great for this, this uh, bottom part of the hedge where I want to kind of ink softly around those flowers. So I find the smaller ones a little hard to get used to, but um, that's why I'm using them. So I do get used to them. And I used the leftover like grass die cut piece for my mask. And I'm just throwing that in my jar of, I have like a dish of like scraps I use as masks. It's nothing fancy, but it works for me and it gets the job done. I'm stamping the sentiment in that darkest purple ink. It's kind of like an eggplant color in the sky over the cloud area. It says, have a beautiful day. And um, I'm going to figure out where I want to put my bumblebee brads that I bought at the stamp show. I really like using brads on cards. They're flat. They don't cost extra to mail and they're really easy to attach. I don't have to glue them. I can just plop them through my stamped image. And I thought these were so cute. But if you don't have these, what you could do is just take like a, like a half inch to like, um, you know, yeah, about half inch circle punch and punch it out of yellow and then, you know, draw the stripes on it. Maybe just hand draw a couple, um, a couple of wings with a marker. You could also use a bumblebee peg stamp. There is some in some of their sets. So you might actually already have a tiny little bee stamp if you want to use that. But I thought this would kind of double up as an embellishment too. And those fat little bumblebees are so cute. And then I just adhered the whole panel down to my card base. I try to do the brads before I adhere the panel down. A lot of times I forget, but that way I could hide the legs um, between the layers of cardstock. Now to attach this little die cut here, I'm just using a fine tip glue apple applicator and I'm just going to press it down over that stamped panel and it's perfectly um, made for a five and a half inch card. So I'm just going to glue that down 
and um, that's going to let you see through. Now, if you don't have this, you could cut strips of white cardstock and make yourself a little fence. I've done that before, and that works well, too. Um, I was actually looking for a fence die cut because I thought I had one, and I had, like, kind of a spooky Halloween one, but I didn't really like the look of that as much as, as this, and this isn't even a fence, but I thought, you know, that would work. That looks kind of like the wrought iron, like, a uh, porch trim that you see on some like older houses sometimes so I thought it was just a pretty effect and then I layered over a grass die cut on top and that's again another tried and true standard die I noticed that probably my card base cutting was off because I did have to trim a little bit of that um, lattice off the edge but you know just do it from the back side and it'll look nice and neat now for the inside of the card I decided I would do another sentiment from the um, beautiful stamp set and I'm putting you're sweeter than honey in there and then I'm using the little bee stamp that came from that unmounted stamp set from rubber stamp tapestry to just kind of um, embellish it a little bit I like to have something on the inside of a card because I have a hard time coming up with things to write I'm definitely better expressing myself verbally than in you know written word <laughs> Uh, obviously, if you've seen my videos, you know I have the gift of gab, as they say. Uh, so then I'm just embellishing this with another little strip of green cardstock cut with that same grass dye. Um, so look through your stash. You can also use a decorative edge scissor for your grass edge. Um, it, use what you have. It's going to get the job done. I think this is simple and nice and flat and easy to mail, and I really like the way it turned out. I was debating whether just to leave the card alone, and honestly, I think it's really pretty just like this, but I did want to do something to the centers of these flowers, so I'm just using a yellow acrylic paint pen to add the centers in. Then I thought, why not add a little sparkle? So I'm using my Quickie gl uh, glue pen to put some adhesive down so then I can add some glitter. This pen is excellent for adding glitter or foil touches on your card, so I highly recommend it. It's also very inexpensive. This product here that I'm using to apply my glitter, uh, I'm not in love with. This is the uh, Tim Holtz glitter sprayer the ranger glitter sprayer it came out it was released a couple months ago and i ordered one and uh, i gotta say so far i've used it a few times and i'm not that impressed with it but i'm going to use it a little bit more before i make my final judgment on it if you guys have any tips for this product if you have it and you've got ways you really love using it please let me know in the comments below because right now i'm thinking i wasted five bucks but um i'd love i'm just going to give it a, a few more shots and hopefully <laughs> come up with a better way to use this but there you can see it's got a little glimmer and glitz to it and um i think it's a pretty little card that is going to be really easy to mail if you would like to find the supplies i used you can check out pegstamps.com that's the home of rubber stamp tapestry where you can find the peg stamps and unmounted stamps I used, as well as the memento inks and refills. I'll have a supply list in the video description for you. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.